In this video we head to my home Grand Prix at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix and you know what that means it's time for the special Silverstone helmet you see that now but we, we have more to offer So before we go to the British Grand Prix it's time to renegotiate our teammates contract of course we had Guan Yu Zhou who is still yet to get a, a, a point for us and I tried to re-sign Guan Yu Zhou but he wasn't having it he didn't he didn't want to come back we didn't really have the funds for him so we're gonna have to look elsewhere Guan, Guan Yu Zhou will no longer be a brown GP driver but this man Callum Eilat will be as he does accept our offer and he will be our new teammate if you're wondering why I picked Callum Eilat I've kind of been basing my opinion on like my teammate by watching the real life F2 and I've become a fan of Callum Eilat so he will be our teammate for the re remainder of the season depending on how he does as well we might resign him next season but into qualifying then for the British Grand Prix you can see the helmet if you are around on the channel for F1 2019 you know that every time we get to Silverson I like to change my helmet and mix it up a bit um, but the other helmet will be back for the Hungarian Grand Prix so don't worry in that sense if you like that helmet um, our first run was a bit bad so we went again we're still P11 towards the end of the session we are right we are last we are p22 for me silverstone always been a bit of a frustrating one because a real struggle through the maggot beckett section which is one of my favorite parts of of any track to be honest but we're going to be starting last so silverstone obviously it's one of my favorite grand prix it's my home grand prix but it's a track that I do struggle at a little bit, so let's get into the race. We return once again then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. With good opportunities to overtake at the end of the Wellington and Hangar Straits, there's a lot of potential for close action around the 3.6 miles of the Silverstone circuit. With 18 corners and average lap speeds of around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the longest and quickest circuits on the calendar. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today? And how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite an hour operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Ricardo, Perez, Stroll, Ocon and Lando Norris. Albon, they've taken a grid penalty. Kvyat, Antonio Giovinazzi and Raikkonen, Grosjean, Russell, Pierre Gasly and Carlos Sainz. Magnussen, Ireland, Latifi and Brown. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So Callum Oyla actually out qualifying us for, which is a bit, a bit awkward, him being our new teammate, but we'll see if he can keep it up, we'll see what happens. We're gonna be doing a one stop from the softs onto the mediums. Let's get into the British Grand Prix then, shall we? It's the 70th anniversary and the lights are out, his Mercedes on the front row yet again there's a good start from one of the Williams in the background we're going to go right to the inside of the track, we need a good start here heading down into Abbey, now free from come, there's a, there's a Renault wide that's Daniel Ricciardo, now we're going to have to send it down into the village, we can't though because of the fact that there's yellow flag from Daniel Ricciardo we're now going to try and sail around the outside, that is of Carlos Sainz in the McLaren, we've now got the house as well, I think that's Roman Grosjean, we're on the back as we head up the Wellington Straits, we've got Nicholas Latifi 
around our outside. We're getting around the outside of Brooklyn to the inside of Lafield. Now the McLaren has got past the Williams as well. Heading through Brooklyn, through Woodcote, and now towards one of the best corners on the entire calendar. Flat free cops corner is all kicking off in front of us. We're gonna have to go now as we go through Maggots and Beckett's. And now as we go round Chapel, we're trying to go round the outside. We're gonna do that through Chapel Curve and onto the hangar straight. We're right on the back of the Alvatari. I'm not too sure which one it is, but can we get the job done? Into Stow. No, we're going to have to wait. We do go a little bit wide. Carlos Sainz going to have a look up our inside. And now we're just going to go to the outside as we go into Vale. And we've gone a little bit wide through the Vale chicane. And now round the final corner of club. And that is the end of lap one of a dramatic lap at Silverstone. We've still got Carlos Sainz behind us. Can we defend him off? Let's have another look at the start. We had a great launch past... Callum Eilert, we have to back off a bit because it does get very tight there up, up turn one of Abbey. The AI always been a kind of bit erratic there. We couldn't fully send it on Carlos Sainz like I wanted to because of the yellow flags. But we still got the job done round the outside of the loop and into entry. So it really wasn't that bad. We touched the grass there. This is the start from Daniel Ricciardo, the Renault in question. Heading down into turn one, he got a good start and he just taps Max Verstappen's side pod and he is round, well held in fact, to stop his runner going completely round. This was the replay from Max Verstappen. You can see, I think it's 50-50, it's lap one, I think Ricardo. From his point of view, he's always gonna go for that, but in hindsight, he probably should have backed out of it, but it's lap one, it's turn one. It's a, what is a flat right hander, it's always going to be tricky there, so I think that it's, it's a racing incident that one, but let me know what you think down below, as fair play to Nicholas Latifi, he is fighting back at Carlos Sainz, and this is allowing us to get away, as there is Daniel Ricciardo, he's soon got back in this one, as round the outside, Carlos Sainz not giving up, neither is Nicholas Latifi as they go into village. You can see the small gap whip pulled out through the loop. And now into entry, Carlos Sainz finally gets the job done. But Ricardo's not done with him, the house is there, that's Roman Grosjean. As now skipping on to lap four, Carlos Sainz had a look down her inside and slight contact by the looks of things there. As we're on the exit of Luffield, and now through Woodco. And you can see how much there uh, that left front tire is hurting. And now into Cops down the inside. Carlos Sainz gets us into Cops. We try to get him on the exit, but we're not gonna have enough. If we go through Mackers and Beckett's side by side. Now into Chapel. Through Chapel and onto the hangar straight. We were not giving up on Carlos Sainz there. But he's still going to have a go. We've got double teamed between Ricardo and Carlos Sainz into Stowe. We go wide and there's contact behind us. And Nicholas Latifi is off into the gravel. You can see their warning causing a collision with Nicholas Latifi. And we'll have a look at that in just a second. We've lost out though. Behind us is Kevin Magnussen. So I've said that was Roman Grosjean, it is Kevin Magnussen down the inside. We go wide and off the track at Abbey. Kevin Magnussen still there and he's hit us, of course he has. He's got to hit something in a race, otherwise it's not been a normal Grand Prix for the lad. But we do stay ahead of Kevin Magnussen. This is a replay of what happened. There you can see Nicholas Latifi. It's not really clear that I'm not sure what he's doing there. I don't know why he's reversing. He could have just carried on in a straight line, but he's back on the track. A bit some way down now. But that's a replay. This is what happened then. So you can see Ricardo and Sainz side by side. This is when we went wide and Latifi. There was enough space there. I think that's fair to say. Um, I, I know I went wide but there was still enough space on the inside yes he was carrying too much speed but there was look at how much space there was on the inside he didn't need to try and squeeze me after I was just trying to keep it 
on the track after going wide but our teammate now Callum Eilert is behind us and I'm just going to play the team game as you can see here I'm going to lift off let him through he's much quicker than us we're on the same strategy but what's the point of fighting him let's see what we can let's see what he can do in our car and this unleash him he was much quicker so what was the point of holding him up what was the point of battling him as we come into the pits now on lap 11 you can see it's quite cloudy at the start of the race the sun has come out but that doesn't mean anything here at Silverstone the great British weather can turn in a blink of an eye we trundle down the pit lane we will go on to the medium tyres to make our one and only stop hopefully of the Grand Prix if everything goes smoothly we don't have any damage we don't lose any front wings but as we come out then it's a very awkward and you can't really see a lot from the grandstands in the pit lane it's not the best of pit lanes um, on the calendar we come back out in P20 of 21 as, as um, Charles Leclerc I think it is has retired from the Grand Prix we come out just in front it is Charles Leclerc you can see on the left of your screen there but um, Magnussen now on the back of us and this is the battle I don't want to be fighting I don't mind fighting any car but when it's a horse my, my heart is in my mouth as we go around the outside we're not giving Magnussen any inch because if you're leaving the space he's gonna hit you so he's gonna hit you anyway if you try and squeeze him but we'll see we do defend him through cops there flat a little bit wide but and now no Magnuson what are you doing he's gonna go around the right side I'm gonna back out of that one I do not want to be going side by side with Kevin Magnuson through maggots and Beckett's no thank you I do not want to be facing the other way I want to finish this race thank you we don't want another Bottas situation from the F1 2019 career mode when he wiped us out on the final lap of the race Magnussen though is free for now looking back at it probably should have kept my foot in but we're still there round the outside round the outside at club corner wow what a move we've done there with Kevin Magnussen over to the back, it's not even there but do say so myself that is a fantastic fantastic move on Kevin Magnussen you would see there out of the race is George Russell out of his home Grand Prix poor, poor George he does so well and then he just gets slapped round the face by reliability it's not really what Williams want to see especially here like you you always want to have a good result at your home Grand Prix but George Russell is going to have to park up at Luffield and watch the race from the Williams garage it's quite unfortunate in fact if it was still the old pits he's only up the road but as it is at the minute is is half the track behind Kevin Magnussen has re overtaken us as we go a little bit wide we're all over the back of Kevin Magnussen we're gonna try and get the job done but we couldn't Magnussen went away and you can see just again you can see there's actually rain on top of the halo and you can see like I was saying earlier you cannot trust great British weather five laps ago it was pure sunshine and skipping on a couple of laps went lap 23 we are skating everywhere we're gonna be lapped as well just for good measure and we are going to come into the pits to put on the intermediate tyres because it was like we were running with tin tin plates under all four tyres there was zero zero grip out there it's just amazing how much it's typical British weather you saw as much as I did in the in the teen laps it was blue sunshine we're gonna, and I don't know what my pit, like, my pit crew are doing, they're just sat there staring at us release, release. they put on the intermediate tyres but we're going to rejoin in P19 of P20 we don't really need to worry about Nicholas the TV, he's way too far behind us still from that spin earlier on in the Grand Prix but Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyres the AI just driving around like 
like the track still bone dry you know just it wasn't the fact I was skating everywhere I can somehow stayed out on the soft tires to make it a record breaking seventh British Grand Prix win we come home for a frustrating P19 and not a weekend to remember for our home Grand Prix So Mercedes have won it and what a great race it was. Tell me Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. So in the end, it was a good race for Mercedes. Um, Hamilton ending the winning streak of Valtteri Bottas. It was three in a row for Bottas. It's still four in a row for Mercedes. I think it is. I don't, I'm not sure if anyone else has won a race this season bar Mercedes, to be honest. Um, but we are still alone in the championship. With, we're now six points behind Alpha Tauri. It's just slightly frustrating because we can, if we can keep cat tabs on them, that would be good. And um, in terms of the rivalry, after Austria, it swung our way. It swung, it swung back. Daniel Kvyat's way with two rounds left. It's fifty. It's seventeen to nineteen. Our driver claim goes up to level eight. Callum Ilots, because we've just got him, is fifth. Is five. Whereas Ganyu Joe's was seven. We've got some activities. To do now, I've just done that. I, I don't really need to show you them because it's kind of in the background. We're going to do a HQ upgrade on the power side for the engine because it's very basic in there. So let's see what we can do with that. Um, we now actually, because we have got to level a claim eight, we now can pick another sponsor. So I've gone for this one, RGB, because we get decent money for that. You can see there. Also, I quite like the design. So, that's pretty much it for this video. Frustrating race yet again. It seems that we keep having one good race, one bad race. We'll see if Hungary is any different. Hungary, a bit of an odd track for me. But, it's, it's one that we've had good memories of in the past with F1 2019. But, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in Hungary.